are you guys doing? Thank you for filling in for me this evening, Miss Thomas. Um, I just wanted to do a quick review. These are my stickers from my classroom um, on factorials. So if we have, remember, five factorial, that means that we write five and we go all the way to the end. Um, so that means like five things taken five at a time. So then we would do the math. So we have 20, 20 times three is 60, 60 times two is 120, and 120 times one is 120. This is what we did a couple weeks ago. Then we have the permutations, which are like five things taken three at a time. So if we have five numbers and we want them group three at a time, so then we start with the five. Remember, we start with this number, and this is how many numbers we use. So it's not how what number we go to, it's just how many we use. So one, two, three digits, that's what that stands for. So this had 20, and then times three, which we'd be 60. Another way of looking at that, we could say um, four things taken three at a time. So we'd start with the four, and we go three numbers out. Notice how this doesn't mean where we end. It means how many digits we write. So four times three was 12, 12 times two, which was 24, okay? And then our last piece that we dealt, dealt with was the combination. And so if we have five things taken three at a time, that translates to the factorial. This means the factorial, which is the bottom, and the top is a permutation of whatever that combination looked like. So then we rewrite it as five times four times three, five things go three out. And then this is three times two times one. And now we can take this out and this out. And then a two goes into a four twice and five times two is 10 over one. That's all the things that we reviewed before. But you could also just times out the top and divide it by the bottom so you can still get 60 over six, and if you had 60 over six, <clears throat> you're still gonna get 10 over one. So these are all the things that we review. So now, if you kind of look at the video, that or the, sorry, the Jamboard that you guys have in your in-class, so um, they can pause this video at any time so that you can look and pull up your Jamboard for the in-class work. So it says, the Zapponi family has a table that can see eight people comfortably, which is perfect since there will be eight people sitting down to Thanksgiving dinner. The rectangular table can seat three people on each of the longer sides and one person at the short ends. Grady, who is three years old and can't read yet, is asked to place pre-printed name cards at each table setting to indicate where everyone should sit. What's the probability that Uncle Rob's name card will be placed at the table setting along one of the two shorter sides of the table? Express your answer as a common fraction. So um, think about this. Then Miss Thomas is gonna pause this so that you guys get a chance to group up and then after you come back, we will talk about this. All right, so you had a chance to pause the video. So my thought is in your breakout rooms, you would have drawn a rectangle and you would have put like some chairs, three on the long side, one on the left. And then you got this little kid over here going, I don't know where the name cards go. Sad little man, um, just kidding. So it says that they, we have this big, long problem, but really rectangular table, three on the long side, three on that, one on the short side, one on the short side. And what's the probability that Uncle Rob's name card will be placed at a table setting along one of the two short sides? Well, since Grady can't read, we can assume that each person's name card has an equal probability of being placed at any of the table settings. So Uncle Rob is placed at one of the two seats on the shorter side. So he has a two chance out of eight chances, which we can simplify to one fourth. So he has a fourth of a chance 
to be seated at one of the ends on the table. So that's like a little review from what we have. So you can pause the video if you need to refix your in-class piece before we move on to the next. Okay. Okay, so the next question that you guys are going to be working in a breakout room on is for Thanksgiving dessert. Mr. Saponi bakes an incredible homemade apple pie. Eight equal slices, which are the sectors of the round pie, are cut and one piece is distributed to each person at dinner. After this is done, there is exactly one third of the pie left. How many degrees are in the central angle of each person's slice of pie? Okay, so background knowledge. I'm assuming that you might know this, so I'm hoping that you did. 360 degrees are in a full circle, okay? So pause your video, be in your breakout rooms, figure this out, come back to it, and then I'll go over this problem. Okay, so since there, they said that there's a third of the pie left, that means two thirds of the pie was cut into eight equal slices, okay? So two thirds of this pie was cut into eight equal slices. Um, a sector that is two thirds of the pie would have a central angle. So two thirds of the 360, okay? We can think of means multiplication. So we can move that two thirds of 360. We can do three goes into three once, three goes into this 120 times, two times 120 is 240 degrees. So two thirds of the pie is 240 degrees split evenly between the eight pieces. This would make the central angle. So if this has to be eight pieces, because that says it was eight pieces of pie, so we have to take 240 at that point, divide it by eight, and we know eight's going into 24 three times. And so you're going to have 30 degrees for your central angle, okay? So remember, two thirds of that pie was eight equal slices. So two thirds of that whole thing was eight pieces. So some of you might have to add a little bit more to it. Hope this little bit of a mess makes a little bit of sense um, on this particular question. And the homework tonight, if you look in the Google Classroom, you will have a Jamboard. It has three questions on it. And the coin, remember the coin question we did the other week where we were going a nickel and a quarter, a nickel and a dime, a nickel, a penny and a penny, that particular homework question, there's one question very similar to that. If you look on your Jamboard, it's the first one um, that you're gonna be looking at uh, for your homework on your Jamboard. And it says, Joan has four different types of fruit, apple, blueberry, pumpkin, apricot. She needs to make a pie that contains at least one type of fruit. However, she wants the pie to taste good, so on and so forth. Then there's a couple of throwback questions that we did about the probability of rolling three number cubes, each with one through six, and a probability of selecting an integer. Um, so some back uh, questions on um, earlier probability from the beginning of um, March for your homework piece. Now, remember, I will be back for homework um, office hours. So if you need any help, please come back at that point. If you were a winner of last week, um, I just sent out your packages this morning on my prep period. So I would say the winners of last week's Kahoot um, review would be getting those packages probably around Friday. I miss you guys. I hope my son's doing well right now in his meet. And yay. We'll see you guys soon.